Uh, good morning and welcome to, to the webinar. Um, why you need backup for Microsoft 365. To answer this question, <clears throat> this morning we have Gary Forsyth from Veeam. He's going to take us through um, sh the shared responsibility model, technical architecture and demo of the Veeam solution for Microsoft 365. <clears throat> okay, so before we get into the, uh, the, 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 the Veeam presentation and demo, I'd just like to take a few moments just to, to set the scene. Over the last six or eight months, there's been you know, a, a massive growth in terms of software as a service and particularly Microsoft 365 uh, solutions. This is all about uh, customers moving, moving their applications to the cloud and making use of the, the functionality and capabilities of those applications. Obviously, everybody's aware at the start of, at the start of this year early, in March and April time, we had the lockdown relating to uh, COVID-19, and <clears throat> this has massively increased the use of particularly Microsoft 365, but also a lot of other software as a service solutions and, and cloud-based with people working from home, people wanting to scale up their, their capabilities across, across that. Uh, and particularly with Microsoft 365, Microsoft came to the market quite, quite early in the, in the pandemic lockdown, and um, provided uh, customers with um, trial licenses and incentives to um, to get them on boarded. <clears throat> so you can see here, since July last year, you know Microsoft have gone um, from teams from like 13 million active users up to 75 in, in at the end of um, April this year. <clears throat> so the growth growth for all of these applications and stuff has been has been pretty dramatic. And just to reaffirm from the, the Microsoft perspective, Satya, the CEO of Microsoft, made a, a, a very compelling point at the bottom of this quote. He says, we've seen two years worth of digital transformation in two months. So that's pretty, that's pretty big. People moving, moving their applications and stuff um, to the cloud has, has been pretty, pretty dramatic. It's looking at the applications across the Microsoft 365 portfolio. It's not just about Teams. You have you have your uh, Exchange Online. You have your OneDrive for business. You have Outlook. You have SharePoint. Lots of other applications. All of these applications are creating and storing data in the Microsoft Cloud. And I suppose the big takeaway from here is when you were using these applications on premise, you were running a, a backup service to to back up and protect your data so now that you've migrated or moved across to using a cloud service like microsoft 365 why would you not do the same okay so before we jump across to gary just a reminder then if anybody wants to raise any questions we will be happily uh, take the questions at the end of the webinar so if you can submit them in the panel that would be great okay i'll now hand over to gary gary over to you thank you Good morning, everyone. My name is Guy Forsyth. I'm a systems engineer for Veeam. Primarily covers Scotland and Ireland. Today, we're talking about Veeam backup for Microsoft Office 365. So what I have is I have a few slides just to set the scene about the shared responsibility model, cover some of the architecture, then we'll go into a live demo, covering how we can back up primarily mail, archive, OneDrive, and SharePoint. And as you can see as well, if you can put any questions in the chat, and we can, at the end of the, the session, we can Hopefully answer all your questions. So back of Office 365, there is a shared responsibility model in the sense that what do I need to back up? Sometimes the perception is that Microsoft takes care of it for me. I'm buying my licenses from Microsoft. I put my data in Microsoft, so they are backing up for me. But in the reality is Microsoft takes care of the infrastructure. So it's about the uptime of Office 365, making sure that the infrastructure runs and then you can have access to your data. But the data is the customer responsibility. You have you have a retention policy within O365, which you'll cover. I can show what it, what it does, but the main responsibility is for you on that data. I mean, even on the Microsoft website, you can see here in the slide, if Office 365 is your data, you own it, you control it. So how does that actually look? So from a Microsoft standpoint, I'll just build this slide out. You can see here from the primary responsibility is the uptime of the service. So you have access to your data. Anything behind that, so replication for DCDC, 
recycle bin, so we had a 30-days recycle bin, 90 days in SharePoint, etc. And the security of that, so the physical security of the data centres, the lodge of security, make sure the apps have security as well, and they have a role as a data processor. From a customer or client perspective, it is your data. If you want to have a copy of that data, you need to make sure that you're copying that data. It's, you'll have it if you want a different location. If you want to have further retention, which is given from a deleted items type, so if you want to keep that for a year, for two years, for three years, for, for compliance reasons, or even for having that gap data. And from a data level as well, you've got to look at things like accident deletion, employee retaliation, we've got things like ransomware attacks, malware attacks, uh, role gaps as well, and, and as a role as a data owner, you need to make sure you can meet legal and compliance. We have the six reasons why you need an Office 365 backup. So sometimes you have accident deletion, that could be a user accident deleting a document, accident deleting an email. Uh, retention gaps as well, so you want to have a retention policy to make sure you have that extended retention. So if you have, you need to be audited to say, okay, can you show me data from a year ago? And you need to prove that you can. Internal security threats, malicious insiders, you may have a department an employee disgruntled, deletes data or removes data. And the external security threats, I mean, we've seen a lot in the last, even this year, the growth of ransomware attacks. So it's having a protection of that data, making sure you can actually get access to that data if that does happen to your environment. Legal and compliance requirements, and if you're managing hybrid deployments. So if you've got on-premise, mailbox, SharePoint, and you're looking to use both O365 as well, so you can have that hybrid environment, if you're looking to protect both sides. What does Microsoft actually back up? So if you can see from this slide, we have for inbox, you have O365, but once you delete that data, it goes into 30, 30 days recycle bin, then it's permanently deleted. For SharePoint, it's a little bit longer. You have that first stage recycle bin, but then you get up to 90 days in a second stage, then it's permanently deleted. And it's the same for OneDrive. And if your employee leaves a company and you remove their license, it eventually gets deleted as well. So you've lost that data, you don't have the ability to go back and get that data. What we've found is the average length of time from when you have data compromised to you actually discover you've lost that data is 140 days. Yet the default setting only protects you to 30, 90. So by the time you notice you've actually lost the data, you've lost the data, you've no way to get back. So okay, so what does Veeam offer in that space? Because we protect the data and we allow you to then set extended retention of the data, take a copy of your data, you can put a retention on it from one week to five years, five years plus. And that's across everything. That's across your inbox, your deleted items, auto archive data, SharePoint, OneDrive, and even if an employee leaves a company, you can still have that data protected and held within a repository within Veeam. So now I'll cover a little bit of the architecture and how that actually holds together. So the Veeam Backup for Office 365 covers both on-premise and Exchange Online, SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. The main component we have is Veeam Backup for Office CS5. This can be a virtual machine, it can be a physical box, it can be on-premise, it can be in cloud of choice, it can also be downloaded from the Microsoft Marketplace. So you can actually, there is a specific machine out there for that, which you can get access to. This machine is also the data mover as well, so what we call a proxy box. It can be the same box or it can be a separate box, but I'll cover that more when we go into the demo and I can show how that holds together. So when you back up the data from on-premise or online, you can back up. First option you have is two disks, so direct tax storage, network tax storage, local disk basically attached to the Veeam backup for OFT65. You write that data down, it backs it down and it keeps a copy of that data. You then set retention on that for how long you want to keep it. The second option we have, which expands out, is we can write into object storage. So if you have this in Azure and you want to write to Microsoft Azure Blob, we can write directly to that object storage so you can utilize the object storage. The way we write the data down to this is a little bit different. As when we did the block level, we write down everything to the block storage. When we do the object store, we have a local storage called a cache repository on the Veeam backup of the 365 server. This is about one to two percent of the size of your total data that you're protecting and all this is is metadata it's where the data is held i'll explain that when we're talking about restore why 
we use the cache repository. But once we write the metadata down to local storage, we also write the metadata and the backup data into your object storage. And you can see here we support Amazon S3, S3 compatible, Azure Blob, and IBM Cloud. This can also be SD compatible on premise if you want to have it on premise as well. It doesn't have to be cloud based. If anybody's used Veeam Backup and Replication, you may be familiar with, familiar with the Veeam Explorers for Exchange and SharePoint. The new addition here is OneDrive called Office 365 piece. What this allows us to do is to look at the backups that we have and then search, look at what we're going back, look at version history, then we can do that recovery. When we do the, the browse search and restore from backup on disk, we do all that browse search and restore from disk, we put it through the explorer, and we can then bring it back to Office 365 or on-premise. And this is both ways. We could take it from Office 365 in the cloud for Exchange Online and actually store it back to on-premises as well if you have hybrid environments. The reason we have the cache repository is this allows us to do the browse and search. Because what this means is you don't get any costs for browsing against the object storage. You're looking at the local repository, you do your browsing, your search. Once you decide what you want to restore, it then brings that data back from the object storage through the Veeam Explorers, through the same recovery options, back to on-premise or in the cloud. Now, there's 25 different ways you can bring back all this data. Do you need to use all those options? Probably not, but it gives you the options that are actually there. So what I'm now going to do is jump into the demo. Again, as mentioned before, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. And we'll also have, if you want to talk at the end as well in Q&A, we can do that as well. So if you give me a second, then I'll get the, the demo up. OK, so the Veeam Backup for OTS 5 software. If anybody's used Veeam Backup and Replication, you'll notice that the interface is very, very similar in how it, how it looks, how it feels. So the first thing we have is the backup infrastructure. So that's a little bit of what I just covered there in the architecture. Along about we have the proxy server which is here, and this is installed by default on the Veeam Backup for the six five server. If you want to add in additional proxy servers, we add in a proxy server, you give it the host IP or DNS name, you would run through the wizard, that would install the software required, and that is our data mover. So this is the guy who does all the grunt, all the, the moving of the data. We then have our backup repositories and our object store repositories. These are where you're going to write your backup data to. So for example, if I add in a backup repository, I give it a name, I could call this Gold Mail, for example. I then pick my backup repository. In this lab, I only have the one set up, but I could have different repositories. I then set my path. Now, the path is where do I want to write my backups if I'm using disk storage, or it's where I want to put my metadata if I'm using object storage. So I'll just create a new folder, just for the test. When I click next, I have the option to offload to object storage. If I click next from here, I'm writing local to disk. If I click offload, I can then add in object store. So I'll just show you how this works. I can then add in S3, Amazon S3, Azure, or IBM Cloud. If I click Azure, click next, it then asks me for the credentials to log in and the region. That will then add in the storage that I've already created within Azure. When I click Next, this is where I set my attention. So I have the options of 1, 2, 3, as you can see, 10, 25, keep forever, or I can even specify the number of days. If I say I want to keep 120 days worth, I can write that in here. We then have two different levels of retention. So we have item level retention, this is based on the age of, if you're backing up mail, for example, is based on the age of the mail or the creation or modified date of the mail. If I say back this up and I run, it will only take the last 120 days worth of mail from my Office 365 mailbox. So anything older, it won't protect. You generally find most people use snapshot-based retention. This is based on, you'll take a backup of everything within your environment at that point in time let's say for today, but it will keep it for 120 days as a retention period, or a year or two years. If I click Finish, that's that job created. I can, I can show you here I have three created. So I have Contractors one, I have Synology Repo, this one will write into local disk. You can see here I'm keeping 14 days worth of data on that snapshot-based retention. I have also created one where I can offload to S3 storage. 
So I have my local path to keep the object cache, the metadata, and I'm offloading, in this case, to Wasabi for S3 storage. So as soon as the data is done, it moves it up and it copies it up for seven days. So once you have that infrastructure and you set your retention policies, you want to add in your organization. So as part of that, you would add in your organization, which is connecting basically to your tenant. So you've got the option of Office 365, hybrid if you have Exchange on-premise, SharePoint on-premise, or just on-premise. When you're doing Office 365, you have the option of Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and OneDrive. It doesn't matter if you take both these here, because you can be very granular on what you protect, even if you've got both checked. So when I click Next, we have Regions. Generally, we always pick default, unless you're in Germany or China, or in the US. So this checkbox here for just for other locations. We then have the option for Modern Authentication. Modern Authentication with Legacy, which allows you to use things like uh, public folder mailboxes, dynamic dist distribution groups. And we have Basic Authentication, which is just a username and a password. Most people will use Modern Authentication. You click Next. If you've not set up an application within Azure Active Directory, this allows you to do this. And it does it automatically. I would click Next. I would give it a name. So I could say Veeam VPO. I can then add in a certificate. So I can generate one from the server. I can select a certificate which is stored in the server, or I can import one from a PFX file. If I click Generate, it gives it a friendly name. Click Finish. I then have that certificate to authenticate. I then go through the device login. I will not run through this, but if I copy the code, go to here, that then allows me to, and it will set up the environment for me. As you can see here, I have two set up. So I've got a personal one, and I have one which is just a demo environment within Microsoft. So if I run through this and edit the organization, you can see here I have both using MFA. So it's saying use an existing, because I've already created it. And this is where I put in my username and application ID. Once I've created my organization, you'll be looking to do a backup. So if I want to add a backup, I add the backup job. I give it a name. I then have the option of backing up the whole organization. So that will back up the mail, the archive, the SharePoint, and the OneDrive. If I pick up following objects, I have the option of adding in specific users, groups, SharePoint sites, or again, the whole organization. It doesn't matter what one I really pick here, because in this screen, I can pick from up the top as well. What this does is it live browses the tenant to see all the users. So I can pick an individual user and add that user. Once I have the user, I can edit the user and say, well, I only want to back up their mail, or I want to back up their OneDrive. I can be very selective. Most people won't add in per user level. If you have a lot of users, it's going to take a little while. You can use groups, which makes it a little bit easier. So if you have things like IT department, finance, marketing, whatever groups you want to create, you can then say, okay, let's look at the different groups. So I have legal team. I can click add on that as well. And I can also jump into that and pick what I want to protect, whether it's the mail, the archive, the OneDrive. Once I've added those groups in, I can also add in exclusions. So if I added that group in and there's a person in that team that I don't want to back up, I can also pick that person, for example. Then I can say, don't back up the exclude the, the archive, exclude the mail, etc. So remove that user. I then pick up my proxy, which we spoke about earlier on, and I pick my repository. So in this one, I have contractors with its five. I could create a repository with a retention policy that I want just for that department. When do I want to run the job? Daily at a specific time, what days, weekends, days of the week as well. Or I can actually say run every 30 minutes. I have a retry on this as well. This is more to do with the throttling piece where if you get an object that fails on, it'll wait for 10 minutes, then I'll go back and retry that object again. When I click create, that creates the job and I can run the job. So for example, if I look at this one here, so mail, edit. So I'm backing up finance team and I'm backing up the user that I have the login on as the administrator. Sorry, and I'm all I'm backing up is the mail on that one. I then have the repository, I then have the repository there. 
and I have it set to run. And I've ran this, I think I ran it yesterday and one today as well, yeah. So they've been ran and they've been created. So once you've done the backup, the thing you're looking at to do is restore. And these ones, I've got OneDrive one set up and I've got SharePoint one set up as well. So what I can do is explore place exchange data or explore point in time. So I pick point in time. I can still look at the latest available or I can look back at previous backups. So I can go back to a point in time. I just set this lab up yesterday, so I'll only have yesterday and today, but if I've been backing up, I'd have more days. So pick the latest point. This brings up the Veeam Explorer from Microsoft Exchange. So this is exactly the same explorer, whether it's on-premise or whether it's online. I then see my, my tenant. I see a list of my users. I can bring back all mailboxes, so I can restore all the mailboxes. I can export them out to a PST on the desktop, and I can export them out to a PST of my choosing. If I want to bring back an individual user, I have the same. I can restore that user back to its location it came from, or I can restore it out of place as well, or export to a PST. I can then browse the inbox, and I can see the, the mail, the mails that are here. And if I want to bring back an individual or a few mails, I can right click, again, restore back to the original location, store out of place, PST to desktop or file, save it to the desktop, save it as a message file, or even send it as an email back to the user as well, or to a different user. What I can also do is, you can see up here, I have a thing called compare with production. So if I do compare with production, this is quite a powerful tool. What this will do is it'll log into production. It'll ask me for credentials, so I need to, if you give me a second, I'll need to go on a different screen and set this up. So what I'm doing is I'm just authenticating on a different screen at the minute, so this will let me in. So that's me authenticated, it should update here shortly. There we go, we are authenticated. When I click connect, what this is going to do is going to browse against what's in production, against what's in the backup, and tell me anything that's changed. So if you have a user who has deleted email, email, they're not sure what they've deleted or what's happened, this allows you quickly to look at that point. And you can see here I have delete or move, I can also click show changed items only, which will then show me only what's removed. And if I bring in a screen, so if I actually start a restore on this, I can then say restore back to the admin. Again, it'll ask me to authenticate in, and I need to then log in again. But what that'll do is it'll then restore those items back straight to the user. From a Compliance and e-discovery type thing. We have standard search, which is just like your normal uh, Outlook search. We also have advanced find as well. So if we do advanced find, I can start to build up a criteria field. Now what I can do is I can say all fields. I can say, let's go for from. I can say contains, for example, and I can put in a value. So if I put that in and put add to list, it adds to the list, but it's not, it's not actually started anything yet until I click start. If I click start, it'll now browse against that mailbox and bring back everything within that criteria. I could then even say, okay, I'm looking for something within a certain date and time field. I can say date to see between, I can say yesterday, and I can say, let's have a look here for 18th. And we can say between, just look at the 18th all day. If I add that to the list, I can then build up a criteria again, which is added in. I click start, it then tailors that down again. Once I get to the point where I found what I'm looking for, I can restore it back to the same person. But if you're giving this that compliance office, for example, you could export it as a PST and give them that data to, look, to work on. I'll quickly jump out of that one. And we have the same for OneDrive. So if I have OneDrive data, I can then explore the latest OneDrive data. And I'll also kick off the SharePoint One member here as well. So you can see we have the Veeam Explorer for Microsoft OneDrive. Very, very similar to the Exchange one. I have my tenant. I then have the users that I'm protecting. If I browse in, I can then see what's within that OneDrive. I have the option then of restoring the document, overwrite what's there, keep a copy, copy the document, save the document as a file or a zip file, or send the document as an email as well. We also have versioning on this as well. So most of those are version one, but if you can see this one here, it has version two, 
if I right click, I can view the version history. So I can actually look back and see previous versions, which allows me then to restore that document as well. So I could actually keep send that document back to the original user from depending on how many versions you have. The same as the exchange, we also have the advanced find, so we can start to build out that criteria as well. I won't run through the options on this as it's exactly the same as the exchange one. We can build that criteria out to get the data back that we want. We also have the option of restoring the whole OneDrive, so overwrite or out of place, copy to a different location, save it out as well, or send it as an email. From a SharePoint, again, we have the VM Explorer from Microsoft SharePoint. Again, you can see we have the, the tenant. We then have the site, so I can restore the whole site. I can then go into content. I can restore the library. I can save the library out, and I can also send the library as well. From within the documents, the same as OneDrive, I can see individual documents. I can restore the documents, but I can also view the history on those documents as well. So we have the same options. We also have that advanced find as well. Again, we can build out that criteria. That's pretty much been back up for OT65 and what we can do. Hopefully it's generated a few questions. I'll keep, keep the lab open in case there's any questions around about it, then we can go in and check things. But from my side of things, that's the demo done. If we open, want to open up for questions. Thanks for that. Um, it's really interesting to see that because it's, it's not something I'd normally look at that side of it. Um, I do have one question. If anyone wants to ask any questions, drop them into the to the Goosey webinar control panel. Um, have you noticed since lockdown uh, a change to the frequency that people are using this? Yeah, I mean, from from lockdown actually when we went into place, most of the most of the people when we were talking to most customers, most of the challenges we're talking about is obviously six five backup. A lot of people had been using it, uh, maybe only small in the environment, maybe testing the water with it, but because of all the lockdown, everybody went from home, they realised that a lot of data is getting generated within this. Then it becomes apparent that, well, how do we back it up? What happens if we do get a ransomware attack? What happens if we lose data? So there has been a big adoption of this over the last like, six months. Um, the, one of the, the main things whenever we were talking about planning this webinar for me was that assumption that you, you did need to sort out your own backup. It's something I'd assumed as well. Um, this is maybe naive of me, but it seems to be quite a common misconception. Have you found that? I think it's it's becoming more prevalent that people are realising they do need to back up now. I think at the start, the mindset was generally, I'm buying an SLA from Microsoft, so that's fine. I've bought a product, I don't have to worry about it. But then it quickly became apparent that along the lines of you know, the 30 days deleted items, the 90 days deleted items, if it goes beyond that point, you've lost that data. If you get corruption, you can't really help with that corruption because it's going to keep that corruption anyway. And if it replicates it, you're replicating that corruption as well. So you still do need to back up for it to make sure you have that built and braces approach to make sure you do have a copy of your data. For sure. And I know it specifically has helped me in the past where I uh, we were planning an event and I lost a, a load of folders from my Outlook, but I didn't realize I'd lost them for like six months. And whenever I find out, oh, no crisis, but our internal IT let me know that it was actually still backed up beyond that, so it was quite useful. Um, yeah, we've got one question in here. Well, there's two questions. There's one from Amir and Paul. Um, do you want to come on and, and ask yourself, or do you want me to ask the question for you? Uh, Amir and Paul, if you could just, uh, I don't know, write something in the question there that says, voice or, voice or me, <laughs> we'll use those. <laughs> okay, so Amir and Paul have both put me in the hot seat, that's fine. Um, so Amir wants to know what way the pricing and licensing works for this. Um, is it price per user account? I don't know if that's yeah. a question for yourself or if it's maybe a Sinead one. I'll, I'll let you guys take it away. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to do that one. So the licensing for Microsoft 365 from a Veeam standpoint is based on a per user basis. It's based on if you license one user, that allows you to back up their mail, their archive, their OneDrive and their SharePoint from that standpoint. So if you know how many people you're protecting from uh, Office 65, what you're buying from Microsoft, it generally translates across to what you, you would purchase from a Veeam standpoint. Things like shared mailboxes, we, we don't license those because you already have a user who's licensed within that shared mailbox. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I think that, that, that should help Amir. If you have any follow-ups, Amir, feel free to type it and I'll ask it. Uh, a question in from Paul there. This is an interesting one and quite topical. 
not that <laughs> this is going to be topical for years, isn't it? Is there a way to remove personal data from the backed up data in the case of GDPR deletion request? Or even if I can expand that, if you got in a subject access request from someone, how easy is it to search the, the backups as well? So searching the backups is that advanced find that we covered and the, the email. So you can do the advanced find and you can look for from two set date periods where you can find that data. What we find as well from a, a GDPR, you know, right to be forgotten type request, generally your retention policy or the legal and the compliance side of things overrides that until that has been hit. So if you legally need to keep data for say a year, just to, to make it easy, you've got to keep that data for a year first before then somebody can say, I want my data removed from the backup. And that should be down to how you set up your policies and how you protect that data. So if you have a specific uh, users or like even emails, like they get emails from a certain place and you have a legal requirement to keep that for a year, set up a policy like we've seen in the, the backup infrastructure, set up a policy for that data, for only the legal requirement that you need to keep that data from. So once you go beyond that point, you no longer have that data and it'll age off. And that comes down to the, if I just run through this really quickly, just to show on sunscreen. I just pick a location. So when I do this, I could set that item level. To say I only have to keep that data for a year and what this does is automatically as soon as anything goes beyond your backup of a year back it automatically ages that data off so you're, you're no longer protecting it. You would then have to remove it from production to make sure that you're not backing it up. And what were the options there in the retention policy? Was it one year? Was you it can specify so you've got one, one up to 25 years but you can also specify the number of days so if you only need to keep it for 90 days or you need to keep it you can even put a year in if you want, 365 days. You can set that up. So it's very, very granular. That's really cool that it can go so granular. So you could, you know, if your organization has different policies, which I'm sure everyone does for different situations, yep. you can be as specific as you like. That's cool. Yeah, that, that's why I had that one with the contractors up. That was actually from a, another demo I was doing where I set up a contractor's policy to say, okay, you have contractors, you don't got to keep their data for 30 days. For example, you can have a separate policy that you then set a group up within your Euro 365, you set up a group called contractors, you back up any contractors, they go into this repository. Then you know that they're only getting kept for that set data time. So you can be very, very granular, but it's more about the actual planning and getting your policies in place. Uh, there's a question in there. Are there any storage plans, e.g. S3, associated with any Veeam licensing, or is it solely down to the customer to source and provide their own storage? It's solely down to the customer to source your own storage. We can help, we can assist with sizing uh, and that type of thing. So we can definitely assist on that on the type of storage to use, but we don't supply any storage. I suppose I should uh, put my Novisco hat on and say, if, if you have a question about storage, talk to us as well. We can help with that. <laughs> uh, if anyone have any other questions? Uh, so thanks from Paul. So Paul's thanking you for a, a question on GDPR deletion request. Um, it is something that it's becoming so much more on vogue, I guess, the sheer number of these that are coming in for every organization. Uh, I don't think compliance has ever been such a hot topic. It's always been you know, a buzzword that we use. Yep. But it's now in, in everyday usage. It's, it's the vernacular. Uh, question in there, uh, can you back up directly to tape? Not for Office 365. So Office 365 is to disk or to object storage. Simple answer. I like it. Quick and easy. Obviously, Guy, you, you can have multiple disks or multiple, so you can protect your data in multiple locations, I assume. You can, yeah. So this comes down to the when you set up the backup repositories. So part of the backup repository is where that data is located. So if you create a proxy server in this location, you can add different disks to it. So in this one, you can see I have the C drive, but I've also got attached disks, so the VNW, and I've got a write cache disk as well. But if I had it, had it in a different repository, so say I had one on-premise, I could add an on-premise repository. I could put the IP in of that server, and anything that's attached to that server, I can then write that data to as well. And once I have those repositories, uh, the proxy, sorry, I can add in the repositories and attach it to that server. Yep, that's great. And in terms of, um, uh, you know, I think that was a very, very good question about the tape because, you know, with with a lot of the um, cyber 
attacks, um, it, it's become more important to have a copy of the data off-site or, or in a different location and, and you know, being protected from whatever malware does, does the encryption. Um, so is there, is there anything when it comes to, say, like a, a Azure object storage to protect the data, or is it considered off-site, really? I mean, it, I mean, it is off-site in that. I mean, we, yeah. we can look at things like locking down the server. You know, you make sure that you have the... You don't make it that you log in with the administrator password. You know, you lock down the server, keep that server locked down. If you are an existing Veeam Backup and Replication user as well, you can protect the Veeam Backup for OT6 file server with that, and that allows you to move the data to different locations. So, if, in a sense, you could do a tape backup if you're using the Veeam Backup and Replication, but it's not natively within the Veeam Backup for OT6 five interface. Great. Yeah. You have another question in there. Which uh, which Veeam servers are required for this, and can these be hosted in Azure, etc., or where else could they be hosted? Yep. Yeah, so. It's based on a Windows server, so it's Veeam Backup through 365. It's installed on a Windows box. Now that server can be, it can be a physical box, it can be a virtual machine, and, and it can be based in the cloud. So it can be an Azure machine, it can be an AWS machine as well. It's also available on the, the marketplace as well within Azure. So it's, it's entirely up to the consumer where they want to locate it and what is best for them. Perfect, thank you. So if anyone else has any other questions, fire them in quickly. Otherwise, you can contact uh, you can contact us at go with marketing at novasco.com and we'll get your follow-up questions through to to Gary and Ian. If you have a question about how we could deploy Veeam, um, if you're an existing Novasco customer, you can contact your account manager, or again, you can contact us at marketing at novasco.com and we'll, this will be posted on our website and on our YouTube channel. If you want to run it back, look at any of the specific points that were covered. Um, or if you think it was so incredible that you want to show your family it tonight because there's nothing on Netflix, that's also allowed. No objections here. Uh, Chris, I just wanted to um, also mention that um, in, in terms of scoping and sizing this, obviously that, that is something that, that we can do. Um, so if, again, as you mentioned, if, if there's any interest in terms of understanding the architecture and the, the, the pricing model um, for a, a Veeam Office 365 um, backup solution, um, contact your account manager or the marketing team and uh, from a pre-sales perspective we can we can scope you know scope the, the project out and come come back with a you know a, a real proposal in terms of the the, um, the details of the product. Yeah, absolutely. Anything we, you need us to help with, get in touch. Ian's absolutely right on that. Um, okay, so in the absence of more questions, I think we will call that a morning, a day, a morning. We'll call that a morning. Um, if you do have a question, you want to jump on audio for a quick conversation, feel free to hang on. I'll leave the line open for a minute after everyone's leaving. Um, but other than that, Ian, Gary, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. And to everyone who joined, have a good day.